This video is a short introduction to hypothesis testing. In this video, we will cover null and alternative hypotheses, one-sided and two-sided hypotheses, and how to draw a conclusion. What is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a proposed explanation for something. It is a specific, testable prediction. Let's use an example. There are two students that are taking a test tomorrow. The first student spends the night revising notes. The second student decides to watch a movie. Which student do you think will perform better on the test? Whatever the answer you formed in your head is based on a hypothesis, given the information available. You might think, with everything else being equal, the student that spends the night revising notes will perform better on the test, compared to the student that watches a movie. The hypothesis that you formed would be, revising notes the night before increases test performance. When stating your hypotheses, you will always have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. These two statements are mutually exclusive, or opposite. We'll start with the null hypothesis, commonly written as H0. The null hypothesis is a statement of no effect, no relationship, or no difference. In science, this is what researchers are trying to disprove. An example of a null hypothesis is that practicing yoga does not affect blood pressure. An alternative hypothesis is the opposite of a null hypothesis. This is a statement that there is an effect or difference. This is written as H1. In science, this is what the researcher is trying to prove. An example of an alternative hypothesis is that practicing yoga reduces blood pressure. Some more examples of null and alternative hypotheses include plant growth is not affected by light. Plant growth is affected by light. Weight is unrelated to sugar intake. Weight is related to sugar intake. Men and women are the same height. Men are taller than women. Coffee does not affect sleep. Coffee reduces sleep. Alternative hypotheses can be one or two-sided. A one-sided alternative hypothesis means the difference is only in one direction, that is, higher or lower. It could also be written as less than or greater than. In a two-sided alternative hypothesis, the difference could be in either direction. This could be written as not equal to, meaning it could be less than or greater than, as long as they are not the same. Let's explore one-sided and two-sided hypotheses using our examples from earlier. The first alternative hypothesis, plant growth is affected by light. This is a two-sided hypothesis. Light could either increase plant growth or decrease plant growth. We didn't specify. Let's look at the second example. Weight is related to sugar intake. Again, this is a two-sided hypothesis. We did not state if sugar intake increases or decreases weight. The third example is a one-sided hypothesis. If you look at the alternative hypothesis, we hypothesize that men are taller than women. Have a look now at the final example about coffee and sleep. Is this a one-sided or two-sided hypothesis? Notice the word reduces. This means we are hypothesizing coffee will reduce the amount of sleep. Therefore, this is a one-sided hypothesis. Before we move on, have a quick think about how you can turn the second hypothesis into a one-sided hypothesis. If you thought of something similar to this, you're right. You could also say that weight decreases with sugar intake. Once you have run your experiment, collected the data, and looked at the results, you can draw a conclusion that gives an answer to your hypothesis. Let's go back to our earlier example of yoga and blood pressure. Our null hypothesis was that practicing yoga has no effect on blood pressure. The alternative hypothesis was that practicing yoga reduces blood pressure. Let's say the data shows that blood pressure reduced significantly in a group of patients that practice yoga for six weeks compared to their initial blood pressure readings. These results indicate we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis because we have demonstrated there is a relationship between yoga and blood pressure. 
Therefore, we would write our conclusion as yoga significantly reduces blood pressure. What if your data does not show any significant difference in blood pressure? We can't say that we've proven the null hypothesis. The conclusion you reach if your experiment does not reject the null hypothesis is that we failed to reject the null hypothesis. This doesn't necessarily mean the null hypothesis is true. It means that we have not been able to collect enough evidence to prove it's false. Sometimes, depending on the experiment, a relationship may exist between two phenomena that is not identified by the experiment. In such cases, new experiments must be designed to rule out the alternative hypotheses. This video was brought to you by Study Smarter UWA. For more videos, subscribe to our channel or visit studysmarter.uwa.edu.au.